everybody, and thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Armchair Gaming. I am your host, Sheldon Goodridge, and you're an excited student hoping to do some learning on philosophy. And uh, last week we took off, we were playing some Destiny, we were exploring human identity and free will, and this week we're going to finish up on that, we're going to start talking about theology as well as world religions. Um, so let's just dive right into this game here, and we'll see what's up. Uh, last week we left off, we were taking a look uh we did a strike we're gonna start off in the in the tower just beneath the traveler and i talked about the traveler a fair bit last week um so i'm gonna tie the traveler into the mix we'll talk about religion theology um yeah uh in previous videos i talked a lot about deification and i think the traveler may be like one of the best examples of deification there is available um and again sorry a second week in a row my glasses are fogging up as i'm recording i'm just uh a hot potato today. I guess that's how we doing. Um, but, uh, uh, so we're gonna look at the Traveler. We're gonna explore how the Traveler interacts. Interacts. <laughs> with us. Uh, because the Traveler doesn't do... It, I mean, the Traveler does stuff, actually. If you, if you, again, if you want to learn and explore the lore of this game, uh, this is not the right video to watch, uh, because you're gonna learn a lot about it without getting a chance to explore it yourself. Um, but, uh, as we're traveling to the Traveler, we'll discuss what the Traveler is. So the Traveler, in the first game, was this, like, bright, vibrant white ball that brought mankind into this golden age of technology. Um, when it was discovered, it elevated mankind, like, drastically. Like, it, it accelerated our timeline for technological advancements exponentially. Um, which sounds great. You're like, oh, awesome. Uh, so we enjoyed years and years... Of prosperity really we began to explore you know the moons of Venus you know we began to look at colonies on Mars like that wasn't just like a thought like that was reality for us people lived on Titan like we explored the depths of deep space you know like we were we were coming up there in the world or coming up there in the universe I should say um, but uh, uh so in Destiny 1 the Traveler we, we learned that the Traveler brought in this golden age but it also brings with it great disaster um, and that disaster comes in the form of all of those things that are chasing the Traveler. And if you look up, there is the Traveler now. The Traveler has been shattered and broken, but it still operates and still works. It has its own weird, like, pseudo-gravitational field. Um, but it brought in its wake a great darkness, right? And that darkness comes in the form of a series of alien races who are at war with each other and at war with the Traveler. And they all have different views on, like, how to operate with the Traveler. Um, you know, there are, there's the Fallen, the Vex, the Hive, and the Cabal, uh, and they all interact with, with the Traveler in different ways. Um, I, I'm trying to remember everything. I know some aspects of the Cabal revere the Traveler. This, the main story of Destiny 2, which we'll talk about momentarily, uh, explores, uh, uh, the main, the main enemy in Destiny 2, in the story anyways, reveres the Traveler and wants nothing more than to be recognized by the Traveler in the same way that Guardians themselves are. Uh, what's going on, Shaxi boy? Um, we'll talk about the Crucible today as well, the I think. Yes, I know, Shax. I love you too, buddy, but you're so shouty all the time. Uh, so, the Traveler uh, brings these alien races in its wake. Um, and they all... And, like, they all, they all have different agendas, right? Like, the Vex are just reality-altering, time-traveling, like, jerk faces. Um, in the last episode, we were fighting the Vex primarily. There were some Cabal in there, but the Vex are robots that are not entirely mechanical, and at least some part biological, uh, as they carry around a fluid in them, which the ghost called Vex Milk. Um, but it's called Radiolarian, um, and it's actually Vex Mind Fluid. Um, but the Vex are reality and time-altering robots and they fear uh the the traveler uh, because the traveler has a power that they cannot control or replicate the vex don't fear anything because they're machines but they fear the traveler because they cannot do anything with the traveler and as such they fear guardians because they cannot control guardians either or replicate how guardians function and that immortality and that ability to wield light is something that the vex cannot replicate um uh, the Fallen, I don't really remember much about how the Fallen came to, like, follow the, the Traveler, except for the fact that, like, the Fallen are prime scavengers. Like, that is how they operate as an alien race. They they scavenge, like, the wreckage of, like, broken worlds. 
um, and just take their technology and do what they can to make that operate. And the Hive are just nasty mother mother effers, for lack of a better term, um, who, uh, like, they have a very, like, old monarchy operation to them. And, like, they're, like, I would argue that they're probably, like, almost the most, like, Game of Thrones and how they operate. Like, the Fallen and the Hive definitely have, like, Game of Thrones aspect to them, like, different houses that, like, wage war with each other. But the the Hive are creepiest of all the alien races by a wide margin. Um, but of all the alien species, they're the ones who seem to fear the light the least and bend it to their will the most. And that happens in this game where the Hive have a ritual where they can convert the light of one of the Guardians to a sort of energy source for a ritual. Uh, so, the Traveler, this is really boring gameplay. Uh, I'm going to hop in a Crucible match while we're talking about the Traveler. Um, I guess, end of the day, the Traveler um, brought with it great good and brought at the same time great evil. Um, because while it directly brought us good, as people always say, like, you can't have light without shadows. Ha 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 ha! Right behind the Traveler came like, the imminent demise of mankind. Oh, I'm not doing this quite yet. Sorry. I obviously want to tie all this together. So, this is the Vanguard headquarters known as the Tower. Um, and it is the last, it is the last line of defense for all of this that we see in the background. This is known as the last city. Um, so after the Golden Age, when the Fallen and the Hive and the Cabal started showing up, uh, mankind experienced a great collapse where, uh, essentially, like, there is no safe place for mankind to live except for here. And obviously there are, like, there are pockets of mankind who refuse to, uh, like, live According to the rules of the tower, like Soraya Hawthorne in this game, who operates on a farm, um, and there are there is tales of other guardians who uh, choosing to operate under their own laws chose to abandon this tower and instead have small villages that operate like kind of like feudal towns where the guardian forces like fealty upon non guardians because people still exist like these are guardians they're just regular folk like you and me. Um, but these regular folk plead fealty to this one guardian who offers them protection in exchange for, like, money and shelter and presumably all kinds of unsavory things like sex, booze, and hard dr I don't know what guardians do in their spare time, because my guardian's a hard-working mamma jamma. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so th this is the vanguard operation of the tower. Um, and we're gonna go check out the, uh, the condo or apartment of the speaker. And that's right here. You can't really... Oh, there we go. Awesome. I right hear what Ghost has to say. That's what we're going to do. They rebuilt the speaker's private quarters even after the reconstruction. I still can't believe that he's gone. He wasn't the first speaker. And he can't be the last, right? We still need a speaker, don't we? So, the reason I want to talk about... Like, the reason I wanted to see that and listen to what he had to say is... That's an introduction to the speaker, and the speaker is a special chosen guardian who speaks on behalf of the Traveler. And if you've played the gameplay and you're not worried about spoilers, one of the things you learn about the Traveler is that he, it's not the Traveler, the speaker is that he speaks for the Traveler, but the Traveler doesn't speak to him. Now this is important, uh, to me anyways, because the Vanguard, while it may protect mankind, it does so very nobly, is oddly like the Vatican. Um, one of the things that like seems most evident to me is that the Vanguard has an almost religious hierarchy to it, where there is one individual who is the most important, and when you play the first mission in this game, which is available in the beta, the three like most important Vanguards, uh, our boy here, um, oh, I can't remember his name now, this is not good, oh, sorry, Cam Commander Zavala, who... I prefer to call Vuzela, um, courtesy of our crazy, crazy, uh, crazy friend, who we might meet later on. I can't remember his name either. He's bananas, though. Uh, we have Akora Ray, who leads the Warlocks, and then we have Kate Six, voiced by my boy Nathan Fillion, who, Nathan Fillion, you're not watching this, I realize that, but on the off chance you decide to, um, you're my hero and I love you. <laughs> uh, so, the speaker in the, in this in the, the first mission, the tutorial, and, like, the beta story mission that you get to do, th their primary focus for a good chunk of the time is securing the speaker. If the speaker is safe, then all is still okay. 
And they turn off of that and begin to focus on securing the Traveler. If the Traveler is okay, that everything's okay. I mean, ultimately they fail in this mission, and the whole game is about, you know, taking back the city. Um, but the game... Uh, the, the Vanguard operates in a pseudo-religious fashion, and I say that because the, the implementation of a speaker who speaks on behalf of the Traveler is like having the Pope, who is the closest to God and speaks on his behalf. You know, um, there is a very clear deification of the Traveler. I mean, like, the Traveler does pretty damn good on validating its deification, admittedly. It's clearly not benevolent because it brought with it great chaos and destruction, but it appeared to a race of simple sapiens, you know, it showed up and said, humans, hello, how are we doing? I didn't say anything, apparently. It just showed up and all of a sudden we were advanced. But it brought with that brought with it huge advancements in us as a species. Um, and when it came time to defend itself against darkness, it chose us as its chosen people. And then brought back our strongest warriors from the dead to defend it. Right? This is a thing who's like, yeah, I got powers. Check me out. Again, I still debate whether or not the Kara the Traveler actually resurrected its our greatest warriors, or if it just uses their like memories and corpses to, you know, kind of provide a medium to relate humans to so that they feel comfortable around the Guardians. Um, but nonetheless, it does demonstrate that it knows what it's doing. It shows off like, hey, you should deify me. I am a god. That's right. So humans, the Vanguard, which they may be doing unintentionally or unable to do anything other than that, they create this pseudo-religion that protects mankind, but at the same time reveres the Traveler above all else. You know, the implementation of a speaker suggests that this, the Traveler has words to share and that we should do its bidding, but the speaker in this game admits the Traveler's never spoken to him. The Traveler doesn't speak to him, he speaks on its behalf. You know, so the Vanguard is, I would argue, almost completely a religion. It is, it, it has its crusaders, it has everything it needs to be a religion. Um, much like the Traveler meets many qualifications to be a deity of sorts. Clearly cannot be, like, a prime mover because it exists in our dimension. Um, and, like, that's weird to exist in yourself and then create yourself. You know, it's kind of a weird, gross chicken and egg situation for me. But the Traveler is, is, is at least pseudo-powerful. You know, it presents powers beyond our control and powers beyond our dimension, power beyond our understanding, and brought with it great good. Um... And on that note, we're going to switch to a Crystal match, and we'll talk more about, you know, Free Will. So now we know the Traveler, and I'm probably talking really fast, and I'm sorry about that, guys. I got really excited there for a moment. Um, as we discuss... What do we have today? Strikes. I'm not coming to three strikes this afternoon. I might do that this evening. Um, as we interact with the, the, the Traveler, uh, we kind of get this sense that there is no true autonomy for guardians because like i've said before as soon as your your ghost is destroyed you're destroyed you know like if i had an available character slot we would take a look at what happens when the traveler's light is disconnected from guardians guardians as soon as the traveler is disconnected from them in any small fashion if they lose the ability to resurrect themselves and once they die they're done and ghost the ghost is upfront about that he's like hey so like i can like heal your wounds but if you die we're done man this is game over and the ghost clearly demonstrates a will to protect itself he's like hey buddy whoa you gotta like figure your stuff out we're gonna get there we're gonna take care of ourselves but like we can't die this cannot be our end we need to find a way to fix this um and i think that's critical because it demonstrates that the ghost has some kind of its own message but at no point does it seem to me that the ghost can't just disconnect itself and move onwards, you know? Like, the, the ghost requires this flesh for some odd reason, as it were. Um, um, yeah, so I'm gonna whip up this Crucible match. That'll end this episode for us. Um, oh, ah, oh, that's gonna run us a little long. That's gonna run us, like, almost a full 20 minutes. Um, but, uh, you know what? Screw it. We're gonna run a little on the long side, and uh, that'll be it for this week. 
Uh, so while we're going to the Crucible, the Crucible is the PvP segment. We looked at PvE when we did a strike. We'll look at PvP now, which is player versus player, in case you're unsure. Um, I assume most of you guys know, so that seemed almost wasteful, but I just wanted to make sure in case, you know, maybe you're here for philosophy and you're not a bunch of a gamer. I get that. Um, uh, so PvP is where uh, Guardians take advantage of their immortality uh, to engage in live fire activity, right? Because you're immortal, it doesn't fucking matter if you die, you just come back to life. Pardon the language there. Uh, okay, okay, cool. Um, this is the RPG aspect. Your gear impacts directly how you play with this game, right? So, they, this game presents challenges. Like this week, I have to kill 15 players with void energy. Um, so I'm just gonna modify myself to be more void oriented so that when the time comes, enemies are dying, I'm getting shot at. Oh, hey guys, there's two of you. Bye! That's not gonna work. Punch! You're dead? You didn't die. You're dead now. Cool. Hey, buddy. Oh, I'm gonna die. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, you gained the lead. what we're observing, uh, in, in this anyways, it almost feels like an algorithmic program where a computer is testing information against itself to see which information is the best, you know, and by forcing self-improvement on the rest of it at the same time. And, like, there are implementations of... Are you dead? You died. Cool. There, there is implementation in this game that would suggest, oh, there can't be free will, there's things like the Iron Banner Tournament, and, like, so they, they spice up PvP a little bit with things like, you know, Trials of the Nine, used to be Trials of Osiris, um, things like the Iron Banner Tournament, which, uh, there are these special challenges in PvP, um, where you get to kind of ad hoc do more than just the standard stuff, but because they're all initiated and controlled by Guardians, it, it feels almost as if, actually, you know what, I, I have to, mm, the Trials of the Nine might be an interesting change. It used to be Trials of Osiris, and when it was, my argument made sense, that was not a good, that was not a good show there. Um, when it was Trials of Trials of Osiris, it would have made sense because Osiris was a guardian. Um, and we can talk more about Osiris in another episode, maybe when we deal more with the lore. And I wanted to show you a piece of lore before we left. Well, that's going to happen in the next episode now. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, but when we're dealing with Osiris... Oh, I'm going to get hit by heavy ammo. Was that sniper rifle? It was. I deserved that one. Um, oh, this is a long match. No. We're not going to finish this match in this episode, though. Um, we're going to... We're definitely going to end it after my next death, because we've been running a little bit long. Um, but I, every time I play this game, I get nothing but this like distinct feeling that the Guardians in this game aren't people. They're, they're, obviously, they're more than people, but I don't think they're people at all. You know, I think they may look like people, but, like, you know, it kind of almost feels like the light is almost like a homunculi that is... You know, boom, that should kill you, thank you. A homunculi that is controlling a fleshy robot. That's that's how this operates in my mind. So once I die, I will switch camera modes and I will end the episode and cause my team to lose. Because I'm a jerk. Yep, there we go. That's fine. Um, so I thank everybody who tuned in. Again, shoot me a message on Twitter if you uh, would like to um, provide some insight or some input into what's going on. You know, maybe you have some questions you'd like answered. Maybe you have some insight into the lore that you think would be helpful for future episodes. Uh, shoot me a message on Twitter. Uh, I think it's the Unbearable Game. Um, I'll I'll hopefully get my Twitter linked into the description down below um, so that you guys can see it and respond accordingly. I died again because I'm still playing the game as I'm giving my outro. <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah, check me out on Twitter. Check out the Scholarly Gamers website. Um, lots of cool articles coming up daily at this point. Some pretty cool reviews. Um, and yeah, that should really about cover it for today's episode. And I will see you guys all in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something today, maybe about religion or theology, you know, deification, things like that. We're going to talk more about it all on the next episode. I still got more to talk about in Destiny, so we're not calling it quite yet. Um, and if you have anything you'd like to put into the channel uh, that you think might be helpful, please shoot me a message, shoot me a tweet. I'm, I, I would love the insight and the feedback. It's all greatly appreciated. Um, and on that note, have a great evening, and I'll see you all on the next episode. Bye for now.